Well, hello. Welcome to another short devotional. I want to t- entitle this devotional Stuff. In America, we are blessed. We have more than enough. Many countries couldn't begin to understand the wealth that you and I have, even If our finances aren't where we'd want them to be, they far exceed that of many countries. I want to take a look at Luke 12, 18. Then he gave an illustration. We're talking about Jesus. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. In fact, his barns were full to overflowing. He couldn't get everything in. He thought about his problem and he sold everything that he had. No, that's not what happened. Luke twelve eighteen said, finally exclaimed, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. He wanted more. Then I'll have room enough. And I'll sit back and say to myself, friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, wine, women, and song for you. He was saying he needed more and more to be happy, and then he'd be satisfied. Luke twelve twenty. But God said to him, Fool, tonight you die. Then you, who will get it all? Yes, every man is a fool who gets rich on earth, but not in heaven. Jesus is trying to say that your possession should not be what brings you to satisfaction. And I remember one time reading a sign that said, If I can't take it with me, I'm not going to go. Again, speaking about death, so many people think that things will satisfy them, and yet we know that is not true. That rich man was faced with a dilemma. He discovered his riches were not enough to satisfy the deeper longing of his heart, so he decided to build even bigger barns and increase his stock and store. He wrongfully imagined that more would be enough to satisfy his his heart and soul. And Jesus said to him, it's not how much you accumulate in this world. It's what you do with your heart, with Jesus, and building riches towards God. How can you do that? Well, the Bible tells us that as we serve him and please him, those are the things that help us to build riches. But do you know, it's the best the world can give us. It absolutely is. If you watch television, if you shop in stores, you'll know that the world teaches us that the more we have, the more toys we have, the more profitable we are. That's what a measure of success is. But that's not God's way. God's way is not in gathering more to ourselves, but in giving. Becoming a giver rather than a collector, one who lays up treasures in heaven. This is the ultimate investment, and it pays eternal rewards. I've been listening to some audio and uh, videos by a prophet by the name of Bob Jones, and he had an experience that has so affected my heart. He was allowed to enter into heaven and watch as Jesus was receiving people unto himself And his experience says it all. I want to play just a little bit of this. To be honest with you, I'm taking this tape and removing so much I think you'd really enjoy hearing. So much that would impact your life. But I'm trying to get to just one small portion of his testimony. I'm going to leave the information so that you can also hear the rest of this tape. He has... uh, such important information to tell you. He actually died, and this is the reason why God took him to heaven. And it was because of his unwillingness to stop speaking about abortion. It's such a long, long testimony. But I want you to understand what Jesus asked those that Bob Jones saw in heaven. That's the portion that I'm taking out. So, There's so much again I want you to hear, but this small portion is what we're going to look at. For a few years, I've been really uh, fighting and trying to wake the churches up, and and you do a little combat with uh, the spirit of abortion that was really grieving me because I could hear the babies cry. I've not been the only prophet that could either. 
but I'd hear those babies cry. And they were the babies that were crying because they were dying. Well, that night, a demon came, and he said, You go on with your ministry. Don't you prophesy about abortion anymore, and don't you tell what you've seen. And uh, we'll leave you alone. We'll let you heal. We'll let you miracle. We won't raise up any uh, uh, warfare against you, any persecution against you. But if you prophesy one more time about what you've seen, I'll kill you. Well, I'll tell you, that devil didn't scare me at all because I saw a lot of devils when I was in sin before I turned to the Lord. But I was with the Lord, and I didn't think that devil could touch me. So the, when the morning came, I began to share it with some people. And then me and my son went out to work. And I got out there about 15 minutes, and I mean, I got to hurting so bad from my belt down that I couldn't stand it anymore. I went back home. Pain seized. And I wasn't in pain anymore. I was in a tunnel. And I was in like a dark tunnel. What do you know? The devil did kill me. I wonder how he'd done that. But I'm going to ask the Lord. And I had on a white robe. And I began to weep. Lord God, I come out of such deep sin and you kept me clean. Your mercy and grace is beyond my understanding. And I just went there weeping. And as I began to walk, and that's what I did. I walked like you would here. I walked out of that tunnel. I walked to that crystal light and that beautiful person in there. And and when people would come to him, and all type of people come to him, uh, he would ask them just one question. He didn't ask them what you gave or what you did or how many people you led to the Lord, or anything like that. He asked them one question only. Did you learn to love? Uh, I've seen Christians there that were saved that ducked their head in shame because they had to tell the truth there. You can't lie there because things are even within you will cry out the truth. You can't lie. And they would say, No, i become bitter. I become discouraged with the body of Christ. They had to tell it. No, no, I didn't learn to love anybody but myself. Well, they were saved. He would kiss them. But there was no rewards waiting for them. They just made it by grace. Yeah. When I went to the Lord in death, there was an escalator on my left side. And those people were wrapped in whatever they served on the earth. I saw men encased in whiskey bottles. I saw men and women wrapped in dollar bills. I saw men wrapped up in their own lawn that they had worshipped on the Sunday instead of going to church. Whatever a man's God was on the earth, is what he was bound with on that escalator. And some of them were bound with some pretty horrible stuff. But whatever a man had served in his God, at every person there, it had a God, even if it was atheism, he had a God on the earth. And there he was bound by that God. And there the Spirit of God, a Papa, was in him, and there the Spirit of God would release when that man stood there. And that man would know Jesus, he couldn't move. I have no idea where he'll ever move again. But there he was like a mummy with just his face to where he could see. And the men and women there would look on the face of the Lord and look at the beauty and would look at the peace. And they would see everything that I seen. And I want to tell you something else there. Your mind was total clear. Only the saint's mind was all things that hurt them was removed. But I noticed that those that were wrapped in other gods, their mind was made total clear. And they went on by and their face would drop way down, their eyes would become big, and they would go down like an escalator, like into a coal 
storage place that was cold and dark to where that they'd just be stacked like blocks of ice. And they were just shooting down there, and never again would they see any light. Never again would they look on the love of God and on Jesus. For they went down in there for eternity. And that's one reason that I was willing to come back. Because their number was about 97 these three of us that was going through the doors. For about each three saints on the earth today, there's 97 people that's going to hell. So I think the question for you and I is this. Did we learn to love on this earth? Do, are we learning to love now? We need to wrap ourselves into the things that God wants us to, to wrap ourselves in, not in the things of this world. Our God should not be our possessions. It shouldn't be our lawns. It shouldn't be our computers, our televisions. It shouldn't be in the things that we can buy with our hands. It should be the things that we can give. Have we learned to love? That's an important question. A question I'm asking myself, Every time I want to get upset about something or with someone, I'm trying to ask myself, how would Jesus react in a situation like this? It doesn't mean that when others treat us poorly, that God's pleased with them. But it does mean this, that if you'll give love when love isn't given to you, that is the important thing, because that's what Jesus told us to do. He told us to love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. And then he goes on to say we're to love others like we love ourselves. That is a lesson that you and I can go out today and try to do. But we can't do it if we don't have Jesus in our heart and in our soul. It's impossible to do. The Bible tells us so. So I hope and pray that if you do not know Jesus in a way that he can change your heart, take away the desires that you have for this world and give you a desire for the next one, I hope you'll do it now. Let's pray. Jesus, change us, I pray. If we don't know you, Lord Jesus, come into our heart and mind. Forgive us for our sins and make us like you. If we claim to serve you, I ask now, Holy Spirit, that you will teach us the way that we must go. Teach us to learn to love. Learn the lessons that only you can teach us. Help us today. Help us every day to be like Jesus. I ask this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Until next time. I remain your friend, Lana Dee.